Today we've got a really nice limit of an infinite product. And along the way of evaluating this, we'll see lots of really nice tools that you can keep in mind for other problems. And in fact, this problem came from an event called the 24 hour of Le Maths in 2022. And it was also suggested by a viewer and I'd like to thank that viewer. Okay, so let's see what we have. We'd like to evaluate the limit as X goes to one from below of the product as n goes from zero to infinity of one plus x to the n plus one over one plus x to the n all raised to the x to the n power. And we'll call that limit L just for the sake of introducing some notation. Okay, so since we've got a product here and it's easier to work with sums, as we've done in many problems before, we're gonna take the natural log. And the log can be taken inside of the limit because the logarithm is a continuous function. Okay, so let's see, that's gonna give us the natural log of L equal to this limit as X goes to one from below of, well now this product's gonna turn into a sum. So I'll write this as the sum as N goes from zero to infinity of X to the N times the natural log of this stuff right here, where I've used my first logarithm rule, where that turns an exponent into a multiplier. And I'm about to use my second, that'll turn this quotient into a difference. So I'll have the natural log of one plus X to the N minus, sorry, that should be one plus X to the N plus one, minus the natural log of one plus X to the N. Great. And next up, what we'd like to do is split this into two parts based off of these two terms that we have. But in fact, we can't really do that unless we take this infinite sum and write it as a limit of partial sums. And then we're allowed to do that kind of thing. So let's do that. So this is gonna be equal to the limit as X goes to one from below of the limit as what I'll call capital N going to infinity of our sum as N goes from zero to capital N of X to the N times the natural log of one plus X to the N plus one, and then minus the sum as N goes from zero to capital N of X to the N times the natural log of one plus X to the N. Okay, so things are starting to shape up. Now, what I'd like to do from here is make those natural log terms look similar. And I can do that by doing a little bit of re-indexing. And what I'll re do is re-index this second term. And that'll be to exchange all of the n's with n plus one. So I'll just say here, I'm gonna send every n to n plus one but that means my bounds of summation are gonna change. Instead of starting at zero, I'll start at negative one. But in fact, we'll just take that first term out. And then instead of ending at capital N, I'll end at capital N minus one. So just to be really clear about this, maybe I'll sneak it up here into the margin, much like Fermat couldn't do. So the zeroth term here is in fact equal to the natural log of two and then I'll plus have plus the sum as now n will go from zero to n minus one. Now it goes to n minus one here, again, because of the re-indexing. Okay, so now let's write this stuff down. So note that this natural log of two is not attached to any value of x. So in fact, what I'll do is I'll take it out of both limits. So I'll have minus natural log of two, and then we'll have plus our limit as X goes to one from below. And then we have our limit as capital N goes to infinity. And then, well, let's look at what we have. As we sketched up there in the corner, my new sum after re-indexing will end at capital N minus one. That means perhaps I should take the nth term out of this so that sum also it ends at capital N minus one. That'll leave me with X to the capital N, natural log of one plus X to the capital N plus one. And then I'll have plus 
the sum as n goes from 0 up to capital N minus 1 of x to the n natural log of 1 plus x to the n plus 1, and then minus the sum as n goes from 0 up to capital N minus 1 of x to the n plus 1 natural log of 1 plus x to the n plus 1, where that's what we get from our re-indexing. Okay, nice. Now I'd like to quickly take care of this term. And in fact, this is not gonna contribute anything at all. Notice that since we're taking x limiting to one from below, the interesting places that we can think about x are, well, they are less than one. So we wanna think about to this limit as capital N goes to infinity, x is fixed at any number which is less than one. But if we take the limit as n goes to infinity of any number less than one, really between zero and one, to the nth power we'll get zero. So that happens here and here, leaving us with simply zero. So this term goes off towards zero. The next thing we want to notice is that these natural log of x to the n plus one terms match inside of this sum that's left over. So let's smush them together. Furthermore, we've got a common factor of x to the n as well, which we can factor out. So let's see, that's gonna leave us something like this. We'll have minus the natural log of two, and then we'll have plus our limit as x goes to one from below of the limit as capital N goes to infinity of one minus x times the sum as n goes from zero to n minus one of x to the n times the natural log of one plus x to the n plus one. Okay, so that's where we're at. So again, that's by factoring those last terms over there on the right. But now let's just take this limit as capital N goes to infinity again to turn that um, finite sum into an infinite sum. So I'll just scratch this out here. So that's gonna scratch out with this to turn that back into an infinite sum. Furthermore, I can move this minus natural log of two over to the left-hand side of the equation and combine it with that natural log of L using logarithm rules to get the natural log of two times L equals, now it'll be the limit as x goes to one from below of one minus x times our sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of x to the n natural log of one plus x to the n plus one. Okay, so that's what we have at the moment. Now let's see where that takes us. Okay, so this is where we left off on the last board. So this is already looking quite a bit nicer. So next up, I want to exchange this natural log of one plus x to the n plus one term with something a little bit simpler. And what we'll exchange it with is in fact an integral. And this is gonna be based off of the fact that the antiderivative of one over one plus t is equal to the natural log of one plus t. So I think probably that's a familiar antiderivative to everyone. So that allows us to write kind of our goal, or really the natural log of two times L, where L is our goal, as this limit as X goes to one from below, and then we have one minus X, the sum as N goes from zero to infinity of X to the N times the integral from zero to X to the N plus one of one over one plus T dt. Okay, nice. Now, next up, we're gonna take this one over one plus t and rewrite it using a geometric series. So this, in fact, can be rewritten as the sum as m goes from one to infinity of minus one to the m minus one times x to the m minus one. So that's like shifted a bit, or maybe the index is shifted a bit, but that's, you know, the standard geometric series rule. Okay, nice. So let's see where that leaves us. So we'll have our limit as x goes to one from below 
we have one minus X. We've got a bunch of terms that we can just like copy over. So let's get those terms copied over. And then we'll have the sum as M goes from one to infinity of minus one to the M plus one. I'll exchange that M minus one for M plus one. And that's totally okay because those two numbers have the same parity. And then we'll have the integral from zero to X to the N plus one of T to the M minus one DT. Oh, and I just realized I was a little bit sloppy with notation here. That should be a T to the M minus one for it to match what we have. But now evaluating this integral is quite simple. You can take the antiderivative and plug things in. Notice we'll get one over M times T to the M evaluated from zero to X to the N plus one. Okay, so observe that that's simply going to give us x to the mn plus m over m. Great. So now let's combine this with the x to the n term that we have and then put everything as a double sum instead of like this sum within a sum for just a moment. So we've got the limit as x goes to 1 from below. We still have this 1 minus x term. And then we have the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity, the sum as m goes from 1 to infinity, and then we have minus 1 to the m plus 1 over m, and then we'll have x to the m n plus m plus n after smooshing those two things together. But next up, what I'll do is I'll, in fact, it's going to look like, like I exchanged the order of summation, but in fact, I'm really just factoring all of the terms that only involve an n out of this stuff that's on the inside. So let's see, notice that we could do that here. So we could rewrite this as an x to the m times an x to the m plus one all raised to the n. So there we have it, we've kind of isolated stuff that only depends on n, which, you know, if we write this carefully, we can uh, sort of do this exchange of summation. Okay, so that's going to give us this limit as x goes to 1 from below. We've got this 1 minus x. We have our sum as m goes from 1 up to infinity. We have our minus 1 to the m plus 1 over m times x to the m. That's everything with only an m in it. And then we'll have our sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the m plus 1 all raised to the n power. But again, we can use our rule for geometric series to sum that up. And how will that sum? We'll notice the first term is 1 and the common ratio is x to the m plus 1. So this will sum to 1 over 1 minus x to the m plus 1. Again, because we're taking the limit as x goes to 1 from below, we're within the radius of convergence. Okay, so next up, what I'd like to do is observe that I can take this 1 minus x and bring it inside this. So I've got 1 minus x over 1 minus x to the m plus 1. But that, in fact, simplifies via a well-known... Uh, factorization of the denominator to 1 over 1 plus x plus x squared all the way up to x to the m. So what does that mean? Well that means I can put simply that sum from 1 to x to the m under x to the m and have a greatly simplified problem. So let's start the next board with that. Okay, so after you know putting together all of those steps, steps that we outlined on the last board, or at the bottom of the last board, we end up with the following object. Now I'd like to observe that this thing is dominated by the sum as m goes from 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the m plus 1 times x to the m plus 1 over m. And that converges if we set x equal to 1. But that means that we could take the limit as x goes to 1 of that simply by plugging in x equals 1. But then by the dominated convergence theorem, that means we can simply 
plug in x equals 1 to what we have on the inside of that sum. That's essentially exchanging two limits because this sum is really a limit of partial sums. Okay, so let's see. If we put 1 everywhere we see x, we'll have a 1 in the numerator. And then observe, we'll have 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. But how many things are there there? There are exactly m plus 1 objects. So now we'll have the sum as m goes from 1 up to infinity of minus 1 to the m plus 1 over m times m plus 1. And now you can do a step of partial fractions and then recognize that as a logarithm and you'll end up with the following object. So this is in fact equal to 2 times the natural log of 2 minus 1. So I'll maybe leave that as a little bit of a homework exercise. But before we finish this thing off, let's bring this natural log of 2L down as the natural log of L plus the natural log of 2. But now we can cancel this natural log of 2 out by reducing that to a 1. And then we can take this natural log of 2 minus 1, write it as the natural log of 2 minus the natural log of E as the natural log of E is 1. But putting that together, we get the natural log of 2 over E. So let's see what we have. We have the natural log of L, where L is our goal, is equal to the natural log of 2 over E, but then exponentiating both sides, we'll get L is equal to 2 over E. So there we have it. That is the value of our goal, and that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.